Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know what? I'm going to kill the music because it's not that kind of night tonight. Tonight, of course, by now you've heard that Demarcus Lawrence is out indefinitely having broken his foot. He could be out six to eight weeks. Uh, definitely another blow to this Dallas Cowboys team that got no sacks on Tom Brady. And we did a live stream immediately when it happened, just breaking the news because I wanted to get it out there as soon as possible. And listening to the fans, first of all, fans and I should say trolls, because Lord knows we had enough of those mother humpers that came in literally talking smack and you know cheering on that the Cowboys your season is done and we had Cowboy fans that were literally literally just saying the season's over it's done we got no chance it's out of here which I almost find funny because I've heard so many people say Demarcus Lawrence sucks he's not getting sacks he's overpaid we don't need that guy replace him that's what everybody, in fact, that's what people were saying going into yesterday. Now that he's hurt, people are like, the season's over with. Well, people, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that he's terrible and he sucks, get him out of there. <clears throat> and then he gets hurt and he's out of there. And now you say the season's over. You know, people are, trade, trade for somebody. Okay, let's be clear here, guys. It's not fantasy football you can't just go through and just trade week to week and just bring somebody in okay it's not like you can just say let's go get Khalil Mack we'll get kind you know player for kind the teams are just willing to part with players everybody is scrambling everybody's getting injury Zach Ertz has got a hamstring hurt and stuff over there you've seen Baltimore Ravens players dropping like flies you know you know Carson Wentz will eventually succumb to another injury you got uh, Shaquille Barkley who was back from injury who's already questionable as well and I'd say the Giants were questionable putting him out there in the shape that he was in um, that first week it's something you have to deal with now the question is what will we do now I talked about in my live stream that at least right now because we do have Randy Gregory out probably this week with um, COVID but he'll be back we have Novell Gallimore who's on IR who'll probably be back in about another two weeks or so from the dislocated elbow that'll help bump up our defense and we have Michael Gallup out for three to four weeks as well uh, with his issue so after by the time we get around the bye week will be coming back a lot healthier we don't know how quickly Demarcus Lawrence's foot comes back if it's the six weeks the eight weeks or maybe even lingers a little longer you don't know but the Cowboys do have options okay now we do have some players that actually all had really good training camps okay um, of course you know we have Randy Gregory as one defensive end we have Demarcus Lawrence at the other we also have Terrell Basham and I got to tell you I like that name for defensive end Basham He's going to get an opportunity to play quite a bit this week. And sometimes all you need is a chance and an opportunity to step up. There's also Dorrance Armstrong, who actually played really, really well in the preseason. He's going to get a chance. We also have Bradley and I. Bradley and I, we've been waiting for a long time uh, for, but he's going to get a chance to play. And Chauncey Goldston. Now, I know Kamara is also on the active roster, but I don't see them ready to play him just yet. So that's the options that you have currently on the roster for the next eight weeks or so. You know you're going to have Randy Gregory back, and hopefully he'll be able to step up and take that load. You know, Terrell Basham, DeMarcus Armstrong, and Bradley and I. But here's the kicker. Here's the kicker of what the Cowboys may do. Um, sometimes in life, you are forced to make changes, and the changes – that you make end up being better than what you had before you were forced to change. For example, before 2013, excuse me, the 2014 season, the Cowboys literally relied on, on, on Tony Romo's arm. We were just pass happy. The only thousand, I, I think we had 1,000 yard rusher until that time for Tony Romo and the Cowboys offense. They just dig the deep ball and we were living and dying with Tony Romo's arm. 2014, Tony Romo coming off of back surgery 
was that first game against the 49ers couldn't get the ball down the field more than 25 yards and had three turnovers. And so the Cowboys were forced to start running the football. And lo and behold, they discovered we can win this way. And it ended up being better because then when Tony Romo was healthier, he didn't have to be the be-all, end-all for the Cowboys to win or lose. You were a balanced offense, and that was forced upon them. Well, we've talked about being a hybrid defense. Enter what we used to call back in my day the 50 defense, okay? 50 being it was basically a five-man front, okay? You have a nose tackle, a guy who's lining up over the center. It's a very run-stopping oriented defense. You have two tackles that are over the tackles, and then you have two guys outside that are outside linebackers that are standing up. They can go in coverage. They can attack the quarterback. They are kind of a hybrid between a defensive lineman and a linebacker. I remember at JMU, I remember at JMU, Charles Haley was actually a middle linebacker. He was a strong side linebacker. But they changed him to an outside linebacker. Charles was about 235 or so at JMU. He was tall and kind of lanky in there. But his speed and his strength ended up making him a pass rushing, you know, dog. And once he got to the NFL, he was able to take that to the next step, getting a hundred and a uh, hundred and a half sacks in the NFL, and being the first man with five rings. In fact, only the second man to actually have five or more rings. Him and Tom Brady. That's the list. But as an outside linebacker, he thrived. Now, here's what this can do. Because if you go to that 50 defense or that 3-4, okay, meaning three down linemen, four linebackers, we have more linebackers than you can shake a stick at on this team. That would end up meaning you end up having Jalen Smith and Van Der Esch as your strong side linebackers. You have your Keanu Neal's, or you can interchange those. And you can end up having Micah Parsons outside as an outside rusher and we were already doing some of this um three four defense in fact you saw d law basically playing an outside linebacker and what you may end up seeing is you may end up seeing the team doing that more because what that will enable you to do is be able to get more pressure from the defensive line you end up putting brett urban and stuff in there you got carlos watkins you end up having uh, Canadian, the, excuse me, uh, the Canadian bulldozer when he gets back in that rotation. Hopefully that's sooner than later. But you also have Quentin Bohannon that's in the middle. And so you're able to start putting pressure with those linemen because now you've got more people to cover. You can drop Micah Parsons in coverage. You can end up using um, Terrell Basham as an outside linebacker or Dorrance Armstrong. You know, you're going to get creative because ultimately what you're trying to do is get your best 11 guys that are out there. And having Micah Parsons as that outside linebacker may end up, you may end up discovering that he can be like a Lawrence Taylor. It'll be interesting to see how it all works out and what the Dallas Cowboys do, but I don't think it's time to panic. I think with the teams that we're facing over the course of the next six weeks, this is a softer part of your schedule. The, the best quarterbacks you're facing right now will be Justin Hubert this weekend, and forgive me if I mispronounce his name, and then the end of October, you got Kirk Cousins. In between there, you got Sam Darnold, you got Kirk Cousins, you've got Mac Jones, who's a rookie, um, who else you got in there? Oh, Jalen Hurts, who has only started six games in his career. We're not talking about having to face, you know, Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers, although the way Aaron Rodgers played this past week, he, he might hope to play him. So don't panic, guys. Relax. They will find combinations that will work, but your offense can help pick up the slack because if they can go ahead and be able to run the football, chew up some clocks, and score every go-round, it's going to be hard for the other team to be able to keep up with that offense. And most of the teams that we're facing right now, they won't be able to keep up with that offense. They're not the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're not. The Cowboys will score some points, and you better be prepared to score 30 or more to try and keep up with them. 
So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get up on out of here. And I'm going to leave you with my buddy here. I'm sorry, Rashid, but, you know, misery loves company. Oh, Danny. What a Danny. Don't what? fumble it. Don't fumble it. Oh, oh, I just said this thing. Don't fumble it. Rashid. Let's go. Rashid, look. You know you're older. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Yeah. Daniel Jones, 12 of 18, 150 yards, one TD. According to Rashid, they probably have a dominant quarterback. Who? Uh, Just read the comment. Who has a dominant quarterback? Not you. I know. Shout out to everybody who's come in and watch our live stream here today. Hope you've had a good time. I've had a really good time. We have been live for... Come on, come on, Danny. What a Danny. Don't I've... fumble it. Don't fumble it. Oh. Don't fumble it. I just said this thing. Don't fumble it. Rasheed. Let's go. Rasheed, look. You know you're... Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Look, he said, he literally said as he's running, don't fumble it. Don't fumble it. And he fumbled it. Thank you. You jinxed him there, Rashid. You drinks him. It was on you. On you. That's your quarterback. You wouldn't take Dak Prescott for him because he's not a winner. Oh, oh, here it goes. Here it goes, Mike. Mike, here it goes, Mike. Mike. If I can't say anything, you're going to need to see this. Now, I would trade Daniel Jones and Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> off the break. You smoke your break. So you're saying, <laughs> if you think that is bad, so, 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 so you're, you're saying, saying you would, you you would trade for that. No. Oh, oh. Harder, from oh. oh, my God. You are killing me, Petey. Oh, my God.